you know, it's interesting looking up non-binary into YouTube, um, at least without any history or cookies, you tend to get a few different types of examples, you know, a few different types of videos, rather. Um, there is the TikTok compilation, of course, why not? Um, there's also non-binary people trying to be supportive and explain the concept to their audience. And on the other hand, you have plenty of people who are not supportive, unsupportive, you might call them. Uh, they call the concept ridiculous and calling the people detached from reality in some way. The truth hurts, but it's the truth, okay? non -binary, you're not non-binary. I'm sorry to break it to you. You are either a man or a woman. I think that non-binary is more of a political term than anything else, which is why I've never met a non-binary Republican. Non -binary. I didn't think this generation was confused before. I know now they are completely confused, 1000% because- Maybe there's a non-binary cringe video as well, right? It feels like the algorithm is trying to feel me out, you know, test out the waters, see which opinion I already have so it can just give me more of the same, radicalizing me for watch time and its sweet, sweet ad revenue. I would not say that both sides are important, but it is important to understand why they are there and what's going on between them. First, we need to start with definitions, I, but, but don't worry, I'm not gonna throw up a definition on the screen and act like it makes an interesting video, but, it is important to know that both sides use totally different definitions. So, uh. so of course they're going to disagree, specifically on the ideas and concepts of gender and identity, right? Uh, one side broadly believes that there are only two options and it's based on the body that you're born into. The other side has a little more nuance believing that your subjective experience might not match your body and maybe not even anyone else's body. But maybe that doesn't even make sense because being born into your body means that your experience matches by definition. You see the issue here? And both sides have the same justifications too, right? Both sides believe that their views are based on science. Right? Uh, both sides will agree that you can otherwise be an effeminate man that always comes up and one side, one side is informed by religious views, right? And the other is informed by actually talking to trans people. But in both cases, that's just them being told their view of the world by people that they trust. It's just a matter of which of those groups have more influence and what their mindset is. So I don't think we're going to get anywhere like this, right? You're not going to get the other side to accept your definitions and you think that their logic is useless with their own definitions, right? Um, and you can make as many YouTube videos as you want uh, explaining your side and dunking on the other and maybe that's fun. It's really fun, but do you really think that those things are changing anyone's mind? I'm not so sure. I mean, there are countless takes on YouTube and otherwise that are for and against trans identities, non-binary identities, um, religion, a flat earth, anarchism, communism, Elon Musk, Rick and Morty, and the Disney remakes, right? Um, it all makes for great entertainment, honestly yet we stay divided on all of these key issues. So let's skip the definitions. Let's get right to the point and just say everything plain and simple. One side says that your role in society, your gender role, fits one of two modes and those two modes match the two types of bodies, ignoring intersex people. The other side believes that your role in society probably fits one of these options, but it might not. You know, you could be somewhere in between those options. You could be somewhere outside of it. And maybe it changes over time. When you look at it this way, suddenly it's not really about science and it's not about facing reality. It's about how rigid social structures are. It's about freedom, your freedom. It is about control. 
Imagine for a second that an anti-trans, anti-non-binary guy meets somebody who does not fit one of his two ideas of gender roles. In order to be consistent, he must compress their experience, fit it into one of his two pre-made boxes, and then, again to be consistent, he must take the rules of that box and push it onto them, push it onto the other person. I think we've all seen this happen, whether it's to a non-binary person or a tomboy or just a guy with long hair. And I think that's the thing. Is that okay? Should somebody be pressured, berated, ostracized, or even bullied for not fitting within the rules of gender? I mean, clearly somebody seems to think so, even if not in those terms, right? Obviously, I don't think so. There is a reason why trans people are more likely to se suicider. But then why does it happen? In my opinion, it's built into our social structure. While not every transphobe benefits directly from transphobia, there are plenty of people who benefit directly from strict gender roles in general. If, for example, men are the breadwinners, they're supposed to make more money, then they get all of the higher paying jobs, and it gives them economic power over the women and children who must rely on them. After all, they're not the breadwinners, are they? Put them into a traditional, detached, single family home, and now he has a lot of control over the entire household. After all, where else would they go? But to keep that power, they must enforce these gender roles to keep women in the home and men at the top. Now imagine that those men who benefit from the system directly are in our government, in our legislature, in our police, and on Fox News. Do they not have a vested interest in pushing those gender roles, pushing the, ner pushing the narrative, rather, and preserving the whole social system that they've been taught themselves? Maybe you could even pay some conventionally attractive women to push these traditional values on your news agency. And they're sure to attract an audience. But that's exactly what trans and non-binary people subvert. Maybe not everybody wants to be a guy at the head of a household, and even some so-called men would rather be seen as a woman. Maybe some people would even want to opt out. Maybe you don't have to know your place. And as for why somebody would think they're non-binary, the answer is pretty simple, really. Internally, they don't feel completely like a man or a woman. Maybe they feel like a combination of the two, maybe they don't feel like either, and maybe using different pronouns makes them feel more like themselves. That's really it. I could go on about the neurology of trans people, or the complexity of hormones and fetal development, or the many societies who have recognized a third gender for ages. I could even explain my own experience. When I decided to make this video, I intended it to be as an excuse for me to come out as non-binary myself and autistic. I was going to explain how neurodiverse people are more likely to be trans and gender non-conforming, but it doesn't matter. None of that matters. Nothing I say here is going to change the mind of a transphobe. I don't have a reason to share my self-discovery story because I didn't just figure out who I am and why I am this way, but I learned why I can't be this way. I discovered why I can't walk out my front door looking the way that I want to look and acting the way that I truly act. I don't have a wonderful story of exploring my identity. I have a story of being surrounded by people who won't accept me, including most of my own family. I have to come out at the end of a video, because those who know me and know this channel probably won't watch this whole thing to the end. But still, I don't have it as bad as some others. After all, I look like a guy, I'm white, my family owns their own houses, that's not nothing. I could have a good if I just accept my place and act normal. It would even make sense if I was thinking about myself. But there's something about the sensational lies about people like me that 
keeps me from being content. And there are two perks of being non-binary that I haven't mentioned that I think play a huge role in attracting people to this type of identity. The ability to demand attention and the excuse of avoiding responsibility. And we've already discussed this in a separate video, but you got the TQ Plus pushing themselves on children and transitioning children. A new inclusive. If you're trans, then that's fine. You're a grown adult, do what you want, but you need to acknowledge what you are. You can't force the entire world to affirm your identity and say, yes, if you are a trans woman, you are a woman. No, you are transitioning for a reason. Let's be real here. And I'm not gonna sit here and be called transphobic because I don't wanna be with a man who has a vagina. Let's cut the crap. They also attacked her, which just shows you that the left, uh, their loyalty is always to the left ideology. It's never to uh, individuals or people who have helped them along the way. Hospitals that abuse children that mutilate their genitals in the name of trans ideology are finally, blessedly being shut down. Vanderbilt, for example, closed its youth gender clinic after the Daily Wire exposed them. So litigation stops mutilation. And these kinds of closures are about to become more common. And to be clear, nobody's pressuring me or brainwashing me into nothing. I couldn't get a medical transition if I tried. Still, I'm not a man and I'm not a woman. Whatever you think of me won't change that.